Um, uh, it is an examination, a camera-based examination, an endoscopy of the small bowel. But the small bowel is a very different organ to the stomach and the large bowel, which can be uh, accessed by um, uh, a gastroscope or a colonoscope, respectively. And uh, this is done by practically every gastroenterologist. But double balloon endoscopy is a very specialist um, uh, technique, a very specialized technique um, uh, requiring special instruments, so a, a particular instrument called the double balloon entroscope, um, and uh, many years of training. Uh, in fact, I got my training from the person who actually invented this, Professor Hironori Yamamoto in Japan. So why is the small bowel different? The small bowel is a very long and floppy tube that can be up to eight meters long. And the, as you can imagine, when you are trying to uh, uh, push an instrument into something that's long and floppy, uh, what happens is that this starts um, coiling or uh, looping and moving away from you, and in actual fact, you get nowhere. Uh, and it was the case until 2001, where uh, previously uh, the only way to put an instrument, an endoscope, into the bowel was to do a big operation with a big cut and taking out the bowel on the table, on the operating table, and making a cut in the bowel and then progressing the instrument through it of course very invasive and uh, with high mortality and high morbidity um, uh, we we were very lucky um, uh, because 2001 for once stanley kubrick was a space odyssey but for us endoscopists it was a small bowel odyssey why because 2001 saw the birth of capsule endoscopy a little camera that was initially designed uh, for military purposes for spying, but the small camera was uh, seen to be very useful for uh, medicine. And uh, uh, a team from Israel and London came together and they uh, started working on this capsule and uh, uh, they had success. So this is something that you swallow and it takes pictures and that we use all the time as a scout, but it is a scout because it just takes pictures like a drone. So when you find something within the small bowel, that you need to treat. Uh, a capsule is unable to do it. We still use it all the time just to scout for pathology, but uh, when we find something, then that is where double balloon entroscopy comes in. And double balloon entroscopy, although um, a long word, <laughs> is, is uh, a relatively uh, simple idea, but a genius idea. So uh, a little balloon at the tip of the scope is inflated, uh, and in order to uh, uh, allow us to have an anchor point, this grips the small bowel like so. The analogy would be that, uh, imagine you have a bucket um, uh, which has lost its handle and you wish to pick it up. Um, you can of course grab it, but uh, uh, another way of doing it is to inflate a children's party balloon inside it. And if it inflates enough, it can hit the walls and grip them. And then you are able to lift that bucket just by lifting this inflated balloon. And that is how the scope balloon works. It creates an anchor point in the small bowel. Then we advance an overtube and inflate its balloon, hence the word double balloon, because there are two balloons. And then we deflate the scope balloon, pass forward, inflate it again, deflate the overtube balloon, go forward, and with both balloons inflated, because we've got a decent grip. This is very gentle grip, it doesn't uh, damage the bowel. We pull backwards with both balloons inflated and we plicate or fold the bowel onto the overtube behind us. And that is really, really good because um, uh, we are able to not only um, uh, advance the scope forward into a very long winded bowel, but we are also able to shorten the bowel so that with a two meter long endoscope, I'm able to uh, scope the whole of the small bowel if needed, okay? And what can we do? We can treat bleeding lesions um, uh, without the need for an operation. I can retrieve foreign bodies, for example, a capsule or something else that has been stuck in the small bowel or a, a bone or something like that. I can even um, uh, remove polyps. Uh, it allows me to even stretch strictures, narrowings of the bowel. And this is used in things like Crohn's disease or where there are other strictures caused by drugs, for example, non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs can cause this. So it allows us to do many things with, uh, without the need for uh, surgery within the small bowel. It has revolutionized the way we uh, handle small bowel disease and together capsule and uh, 
and uh, double balloon entroscopy have really, really uh, avoided the need for uh, big operations to actually do an entroscopy or a small bowel endoscopy, as it is called in medicine. So uh, double balloon entroscopy can be used for uh, uh, bleeding lesions in patients who have been suffering from uh, bleeding from what we call angioectasias or small intestinal vascular lesions. And it allows us to apply clips or to even cauterize these. Um, uh, it allows us to take biopsies, for example, if we're suspicious of inflammation or if there is a suspicion of malignancy. Um, uh, it allows us to mark um, uh, areas um, uh, for laparoscopic or minimally invasive keyhole, surgical removal of a tumor, for example, and that avoids a big cut. Um, uh, it also allows us to uh, treat uh, certain conditions such as narrowing of the small bowel, stricturing disease, for example, in Crohn's or in non-steroidal enteropathy. Um, uh, it also allows us to uh, uh, remove uh, certain types of polyps, particularly in the context of uh, poitz jagger syndrome, which is a polyposis syndrome that uh, creates polyps in the small bowel. And it allows us to even investigate areas of abnormality that have picked, been picked up on a CT scan, for example, a CT enterography or uh, uh, on capsule endoscopy. So it really allows us to uh, have a very good look at the small bowel, but to not only to look, also to take biopsies and treat. And that is the main difference between capsule endoscopy and double balloon endoscopy. Of course, um, we always um, do uh things like capsule if it is indicated beforehand and if we can't do capsule or if we want to do another test we also uh, can recourse to a ct scan a ct entrography or an mri scan uh, many a time before the double balloon entroscopy because that serves to guide us to where the abnormality lies so double balloon entroscopy is a very safe procedure um, uh, we have amongst the uh, most experienced in the world after Japan. Um, my center has been running um, uh, for over uh, 12 years and uh, we are considered to be the busiest center in Europe and uh, the second busiest center in the world. We do up to eight double balloon entroscopies a week. Um, uh, it is a very safe procedure. The complication rates are uh, less than 1% overall. Um, uh, there's small risks like any other endoscopic procedure of uh, making a tear in the bowel, causing bleeding or causing infection, extremely unlikely. Uh, and very, very rarely it can irritate what we call the pancreas. But uh, with our experience, um, uh, even with therapy, um, the complication rates are exceedingly low. It's not really a painful procedure, but it can be a bit uncomfortable. And so we do it under deep sedation with propofol, with an anesthetist there, or else, if necessary, with general anesthetic. But uh, um, many a time, um, our anesthetists are able to uh, provide the patient with, in the vast majority of occasions, are uh, able to provide the right degree of comfort and safety for our patients. So it is a very safe procedure, yes, with a high success rate. So a double balloon entroscopy is usually required um, uh, when someone presents with small bowel disease, um, for example, small bowel bleeding or... Uh, for example, in the context of Crohn's disease, when there's areas of inflammation which we're not sure about, when we need tissue sampling, when we need to take biopsies, when we need to, to treat narrowings of the small bowel, such as strictures in the context of Crohn's disease or non steroidal enteropathy, a condition caused by the intake of non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs over a long period of time. Um, uh, it allows us to remove polyps from the small bowel. Um, uh, and it allows us to also inspect certain areas of suspicion, which, for example, have been seen on a CT scan. So it can uh, provide the whole remit, both of diagnostics and therapeutics of the small bowel, which previously was a very challenging place uh, to look into. So a double balloon entroscopy um, uh, takes as long as it should, um, uh, which is usually... Um, uh, if the uh, pathology is close to the stomach, if we're going up from, if we're going down from the top end, or uh, if it's close to the colon, if we're going up from the bottom end, uh, that usually takes shorter. So it can take between half an hour and up to two hours usually, but many a time it, it really just takes about an hour or so, depending on what we need to do and uh, where we need to go. Okay, so each case 
uh, is judged by its own merits and takes as long as it should, but uh, usually it hovers between uh, 30 minutes to an hour, but can take up to two hours.